Well, welcome back to Loaded Landscapes. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to look at adding some atmospheric grain to our images. Now, I think grain or image noise, whatever you want to call it, gets often gets a, a bad rap um, in digital imaging. Um, it used to be uh, in back in the day of the film. Um, Personally, I would go out and sh often shoot on a uh, film like Agfa 1000 RS, which was renowned for being very, very grainy. And I'm not talking about the sort of grain we get in digital images these days. This is really was golf ball size uh, lumps of grain. And if, but if used correctly uh, in the, with the right processing and uh, with the right subject matter, you could create some very, very beautiful images uh, from that. And, I, and this is what this video is about today. It's not all about having detail in the pictures. It's sometimes about the atmosphere and uh, the texture that you can get with grain that can really create some stunning pictures. Okay, so this is the image I've picked out to use uh, for this grain effect. And the reason I've picked it out is because we're going to be basically getting rid of detail as we have more grain and effects to this picture. So the, the image itself, the subject matter, has got to stand up to being able to uh, um, lose that detail. And uh, I think the simpler the subject matter, the better for this technique. So I think this one's going to work out really, really well. So what we've got planned for this image is not only to add the grain to the picture, but actually uh, add some atmosphere to it as well. So to do that, we're in the uh, Lightroom Develop panel. I'm going to start off by adjusting my exposures. Now, I want this to look a little bit flat. I don't want too much contrast to the image, um, just again because it just suits the image better with grain if it's a lower contrast. That's my opinion, but uh, in this image I think it's going to work really, really well. Uh, but of course you can experiment yourself, so I'm going to start off by uh, looking at the shadow detail. I'm going to bring that up. I'm holding down the Ultra Option key just to get a clipping preview, which you can see on the screen there. Uh, same with this one. So I'm just going to do this by eye for a second. So somewhere right around there looks pretty good. Highlights. So this has got a little uh, bit of light coming from kind of off to the uh, right hand side of the image. Uh, and we're going to use that to effect a bit later on. So I'm just going to bring up the exposure a little bit there. Again, you can see the clipping there in the bottom right hand corner. And that's where our brightest parts are coming from. So I'm just going to leave that around there, um, and again with the whites, don't want to take it too far. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. Uh, temperature, I'm just going to warm the image up a slight little bit, like so. Now I think it's worth jumping ahead and get straight into our grain next because the rest of the adjustments for the mood uh, may well affect the way the grain looks and so I think the next thing we'll do is to add that before proceeding with anything else. So in the effects dialog box down here you can see the grain and I'm just going to bring that up. Now how much you give it, it depends on your personal taste and how big the image might go etc. Size, I'm not going to go too big with the size, I don't want it to go silly. But somewhere around there looks pretty good and I would advise you to just zoom in to 100% just to take a look. You can see we've already uh, knocked out quite a bit of detail with those adjustments. So let's just bring that up a bit more. Bring the size down a little bit, I think. That's looking quite nice. Roughness, you can have very, very fine grain, which looks more like a reticulation than a grain to me. Uh, so just bring that up a little bit. Around there for now, we're just going to leave this. So 58, 28 and 60 for this particular image looks pretty good. And we can come back and adjust that. But now we're going to go into more the atmosphere uh, settings. And we're going to do this in several ways by going into the tools that we have here. Starting off with a good old gradient. So what I want to do with the gradient is basically um, blur the image for want of a better word. Um, I just want to add a little bit of atmosphere and to uh, make the image glow a little bit. So I'm going to add a new gradient and I'm going to go from this side. This is where our light was coming from in the scene. And I just want to bring it up 
somewhere like that for now. So I want to bring up the um, whites a little bit and also let's try the exposure. Okay, just a little bit there. Let me just drag this out a bit more. Um, but the two settings that are really going to make this image work to soften it and to make it look a bit more atmospheric we're going to drop not only the clarity now if you remember rightly the clarity actually is like a mid-tone contrast so if you push it uh, to a positive right up to 100 you can see in the bottom corner down here you can see the tree there is getting more defined and sharper if we go in a negative fashion it's going to do the opposite it's going to soften stuff okay so i'm just going to bring that down a little bit the other setting which is going to have the most effect is the dehaze now the dehaze slider it helps do exactly what it, it says it's the, it adds um a, a filter effect to cut through any haze in an image but the good thing about it is not only can it cut through haze and sharpen and add a bit of contrast it can also do the opposite and soften the image and you can just see now as i drag this down it kind of fogs the image and adds a nice glow to it which i think looks rather cool and adds quite a bit of atmosphere so that's the two settings there we're going to do. We could also add a little bit of yellow in there for now. We may well adjust the colour again in a little while. Uh, also the tint, a bit more magenta. Uh, but we may well do some uh, some colour grading in a second. Um, I think I'm going to add a new gradient now. Maybe from this side. Somewhere around there looks good. And again, have a little play around with that. I'm probably going to drop down the clarity again. And also the dehaze, just to soften those up. Not as much on that one there. Okay, so next I'm going to go to the radial filter. I'm just going to add a bit more selective um, fogging, if you want to call it that, to the uh, to the image. I'm going to uh, grab the uh, radial filter. I'm going to click and drag a rough shape that I need. And then I'm going to rotate that. And just going to drag it down. So I just want to add a little bit more of that uh, dehazing effect to the bottom here to make it glow a bit more. So drag that down. Maybe drag it out a little bit more. And that way as well. And make sure the feathers are set up quite high, like so. And if you're getting that effect, then you need to make sure you've got an invert mask ticked so it's only affecting what's within that radial filter okay so i think that's it for now i just want to have a little play around next just with the color grading i think uh so let's go to the basic panel let's just drop down the uh saturation i should mention as well it, it does affect uh the image somewhat uh, depending on the calibration you choose uh, and i quite like uh camera faithful uh, for this sort of image it's not so punchy and the contrast isn't quite so strong as well with the colors so let's put that on camera faithful uh, I'm now going to just have a little play around with the saturation here I'm going to drop the saturation down a little bit and have a look and then bring it back up again so I'm just going to drop it down just a touch like so I'm then going to go into the split toning here and have a little play around with the colors on here now um, I'm going to bring up this saturation on the highlights first and decide what I want to go with on that and I think something around there looks quite good for the moment let's push up the saturation quite a bit so we can have a better look tick to the warmer tones drop that down there and then for the shadows I want something a little bit more on the cooler side Let's push that back up again. In fact, I quite like that kind of purpley colour. That looks quite nice. That looks pretty good. Let's just uh, alter the balance. I'm going to favour the highlights a bit more. And we can push this and, and fine tune this a bit further in a second. Somewhere like that looks pretty good. Let's just bring the warms up a little bit. I quite like that. Now I'm just going to go back up to the radial filter here. Uh, maybe add another one, slightly larger. Spin that round. Oops. 
rid of that one. Spin that round. And I'm going to make sure that there's a little bit more warmth over on this side of the image. And the reason for that is that it, your eye will naturally be drawn more towards the warmer tones in the picture. So let's add a bit more temperature there. Maybe add a bit more tint. Quite like that. Okay, and then again, just let's just stretch this out a little bit. So we've got kind of a bit of a split uh, tone. We've got the warmth here, which is dragging the eye down towards that area. But we've got a nice bit of contrast. We've got some cooler tones a bit further out. Let's go back to split toning. Just have a little play around those settings again. Something like that. Looks pretty good. Okay, I quite like that. Okay, so we're pretty much there. Let's go back to the effects panel. Let's have a look at the grain again now. We played these adjustments on it. A bit of dust in there needs to be looked at. And uh, let's see what we need to adjust any of these. So it's a bit of a, a to and fro, as always, with Photoshop and Lightroom. You, you apply some settings, and sometimes you have to come back and readjust them. Okay, so we don't want to make the grain too distorted there, but that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's zoom out and have a look at what we've got. So the beauty of this is really when you come to print it, because that's when the grain is really going to show up to the best effect. Let's just, as a final act, just drop down, just very slightly, add a little bit of a vignette to the image, like so. So let's have a quick look at before and after, if I can get that up like so. So this is what we started with, just uh, you know, uh, a digital image, and this is where we've come to, which uh, has a lot more atmosphere, um, a lot more texture, and uh, just overall, just a lot more mood. And I think it works really, really well. So um, what I would say to you is, don't be afraid of noise or grain or whatever you want to call it. Um, in fact. Um, if you fancy having a go at this, go out specifically with um, doing this technique in mind. I would use a longer focal length, uh, i.e. don't use wide angles. It doesn't work as well, but it does work quite well with longer focal lengths, maybe 70mm uh, or longer still. And, uh, and try and pick out subjects which are, are nice and uh, simple and clear. Because as I said, you know we, we are actually destroying detail here. Um, and once these are printed up um, quite large, maybe A3, that's where you're really going to see the benefit of that. So uh, go out and have some fun with it, and I hope to catch you on the next video. Cheers for watching.